Today on Perpetual Projects, we are gonna make this intake fuel pump work with this carbureted fuel sending unit on our off-road Jeep project. Originally, I had planned on using a bulkhead fitting into the side of the tank and then running our frame-mounted electric fuel pump. The problem with that is two things. One, this is not lower. I can't get the fuel pump lower than this point is when it's installed in the Jeep. So that won't truly be a gravity feed situation unless the fuel tank is full. The other problem with that is I can't get this fitting all the way at the bottom of the tank because of the curve on the side here and I don't want it on the bottom because again, this is an off-road Jeep and it, there's a chance that this could come in contact with a rock or a tree or who knows what else and I don't want to worry about tearing this thing off. My next idea was to use the original fuel sending unit out of the Cherokee that the engine came out of. The problem with this is there was no way to adapt this into this fuel tank because I could drill a big hole like this and figure out a way to secure it, but this sending unit is not tall enough to reach the bottom of the tank when it's installed, even at the full extension of the springs. So that, that wasn't gonna work. So what I came up with is I removed this in-tank pump from the original sending unit and I'm gonna take the replacement sending unit that we bought for this tank and modify it to work with the in-tank pump. As you can see, when it's sitting down here, this tank or this line comes nearly to the bottom of the tank. With the addition of the fuel pump on the bottom of there, I easily can get this pump against the bottom of the tank. The next thing that we had to overcome is this is the fuel sending or the, the sock, this fuel, fuel pump strainer that was in that sending unit. Well, that's not going to fit through our hole. Also has a big hole in the bottom of it because it's made to be used with that whole sending unit assembly. So we went to our local auto parts store and got, I don't even know what this fits. We just picked through their box of fuel pump strainers and option A is to cut this shoulder off and this part of the sock right here should fit inside the inlet. Option B is a little bit more crude, but will still work. We're just gonna cut the top of the sock off, slide the pump inside of it and put a zip tie on it. And when it goes down in there, it'll fold to the side. Our tank from where this seals to the bottom of the tank is 11 and a quarter inches. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how long our overall package for the fuel pump is gonna be with the strainer attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and see if it fits inside there. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this fits inside of here and if it's tight enough fit that we think it's gonna hold it. Nope, it's still too big. So we're gonna have to go with plan B. And it's not my favorite option, but it'll still protect the fuel pump from getting a bunch of trash pulled into it. We're gonna cut this as close as we can to this up here so that we can wrap it around that fuel pump and probably end up using a hose clamp. Okay, so we just cut that off. This little, uh, it's like one of those bolt protectors just in there, I guess, to spread that. So we're just gonna leave that in there and then we'll put this on the end of the fuel. <laughs> no, no, we're not gonna, I thought that was gonna work. That's not gonna work. I, I went to my parts store today and we sorted through all the strainers I had. This was the biggest one they had. So we are going to have to go to the online and see what we can find. We will be back with you as soon as we have a solution to the strainer problem. We have a solution, I think. Uh, I cut the tape, but I haven't opened it because I know if I take this out of the package, I'm never getting it all back in there. So what we have here is Quantum Fuel Systems Universal Fuel Pump Installation Kit. Uh, found this on Amazon. If it works, link will be below. Uh, and what this looks like it includes is a whole assortment of different strainers. Hey look, that's the exact one that we tried to use already. Uh, has some wiring for different fuel pumps. Um, I actually think that could be the wiring for this fuel pump, so that's promising. Um, I don't know what that's for. What we're after is this. 
So that boot fits on the end of our fuel pump like that, and then it has this. This isn't the strainer we're gonna use, but it can hold. Well, I'm not gonna use that one. Let's see, what, what strainer do we wanna use? We don't wanna use that one because it will be tipped up. I don't like that one. That one. We have a whole assortment to choose from here. I like that one. So here's how we're gonna, we're gonna put this in here and face this towards the back so that it will sit on the flat part of our tank. So let's see if we can get this hooked on here. It comes with these little star pieces. Doesn't come with any instructions, so we're just gonna kinda have to figure this out on our own, I think. As you'll often find on Amazon, the descriptions for the parts that they sell are often very, very vague and not super informative. Here's what I found. This installation kit is a universal fuel pump installation kit, but it's specifically for the Quantum Fuel Systems fuel pump, not this stock fuel pump. But it came with enough parts that I was able to get a piece that fits super tight into the fuel pump. I mean, that's pressed in, it is not falling out. And then that adapted to this strainer and I just put a little touch of super glue on the outside, just on the very edge, nothing inside so that it won't have any super glue on the inside. And now this strainer is permanently attached to this adapter and it's gonna work perfect. This goes in our fuel tank and once we cut this off, our fuel pump will go on, which biases it towards the back of the tank, which gets it past the bottom of the tank where there is a 45, where the, the tank comes flat and then goes up at a 45. That'll bias the fuel pump to the back side of that 45. It's gonna be perfect. So now we just have to get this fuel pump attached to this sending unit and we can put it in the tank. Okay, so now that we have our strainer attached, we know how long our fuel pump is. We know that we need 11 and a quarter from the bottom of this flange to the bottom of our tank. So I just laid this out so that it's 11 and a quarter to the very bottom of this because this is rigid and we don't want to press that strainer out when we put this in. Then we're just going to mark that tube so when we cut it off, this will basically butt against that tube. Okay, this is going to have roughly 50 psi of pressure on it so we can't just put a hose on here and clamp it it's smooth it'll just push the hose off so what we're going to do is we're going to take our double flare adapter out of our flaring kit and we're going to bubble the end of this and that'll put a a ridge on it so it'll have something to grip onto when we put our hose clamp on you can see we've got a good solid uh, it's like a barb it's not really a barb but that will allow us to put this clamp right up against there tight It'll seal and that will prevent this hose from blowing off. All right, 11 and a quarter to the very bottom of the sock. Clamped. I mean, this probably is rigid enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my brake line. And you could use whatever. I just happen to have a brake line, it's steel. It's not super rigid, but in short sections, because we're gonna have a clamp, basically two clamps right here and another clamp right there, it's gonna be pretty rigid. So it'll keep that fuel pump from swinging around in there. There we go. It ain't going nowhere. Next thing we have to do is pass our wires through the top of our sending unit here. I'm just gonna pick a spot where it's not gonna interfere with anything that's already there. I'll probably come through over somewhere around here. Now, I could do an isolator like that, but I don't have any, and I don't wanna buy any, so I'm just gonna drill a small hole, pass the wires through, and use Form a gasket number one because it's fuel resistant to seal it all up. Okay, so I got my hole drilled and I just deburred it. I used uh, just a bigger drill bit. You don't want to have any burrs on here because you don't want to cut the insulation on your wires you're about to pass through. 
One thing to take note of is you don't want your wires or anything to interfere with your fuel level sending unit arm. It kind of touches the fuel pump down at the bottom, but that's because it's hanging this way. It'll actually be just clear of it, and it won't actually hit the sock because it hit the bottom of the tank first. So then we just pass our wires through our hole we just drilled, and I just twisted these wires just to make them a little less unruly. We'll wrap them. We got plenty of wire up here to put a connector on to plug our fuel pump in. I'm gonna put one little zip tie, or one actually really big zip tie, because that's all I have, right around this, just so the wires are held in place. Oh, I missed the wires. Well, that's not gonna work. We'll just leave that one on there. I'll cut it off in a minute. One zip tie around the wires to hold them in place so that just they don't float around. I mean, they're not really gonna go anywhere, but I just feel better about it. So now the wires are held in place, and we'll just use a little Forma gasket up here and let that harden up before we mess with it. Okay, our Forma gasket has formed a gasket mostly. It's still a little soft, but I think it's hard enough to go ahead and sit this back in the tank so it can dry in the position it's gonna be in. There's the completed product. Electric fuel pump, we got our wires up here. Once this is completely hardened up, I'll go ahead and put a connector on here. All we have to do now is see if we can get this thing back in the tank without knocking the strainer off or messing anything up. I knew I was gonna have to fold the strainer to get it in there. Hopefully the fuel pump fits in. So there's an there's a unanticipated problem. The uh, hose clamp is not gonna fit through the hole. Substitute for zip tie? No, I don't think a zip tie will fit through the hole either. Okay, now let's see if we can knock the strainer off trying to get it back out. Um, I have an idea. Be right back. Let's see if we can get that in there. It's just a CV boot or actually uh, I bought this for tie rod end boots. But yeah, so it's just a boot clip. Much smaller profile than our hose clamp was. There's actually, yep, fits right in there. What has this caught? Oh, that hose clamp was sticking. There we go. And our new O ring is in there. We'll use our new little nut thing that holds this whole in there that came with our sending unit. There you go. Electric fuel pump mounted in tank on a carbureted fuel tank with the stock sending unit without modifying the fuel tank at all. If you like this stuff, you know, using what you have or simple solutions to complex problems without cutting big holes in tanks and buying expensive parts, I mean, we got $14 in the strainer kit. Everything else in this whole system was used. So if you like that kind of stuff, subscribe. Also, if you wanna see how this tank does once it's installed back in the Jeep and on the trail, subscribe as well, because that's coming up very, very soon. See you soon.